healing, salvation, and happiness. It's your season. It's your time. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. We want to share with you yeah. in your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in our streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives with oh, one touch in our streets. We're here for you right now. He knew what we were going to be facing when we came down here. It says that we are ambassadors of Yeshua, Jesus. Mm. Ah, Shadaruto Soria Tasi. Mm. All the weapons are inside of us already. Mm. All the tools, everything that we need is inside of us. The armor is already with us, already inside of us. If you, if we go to Ephesians, yes, Lord, chapter six, verse 10, you know, the, the whole thing, if I read the whole thing, it might take up a lot of time, but we know it's, I'm just going to read a part of it. It says, finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days. Right now, we're, we're in evil days right now. It's a lot of things that are going on <laughs> in this world. But I, I'm here to tell you, you are built for it. You are built. God has already built you for it. Everything that's going on with this world, how everything's going crazy and this is happening and vaccines and all everything that's going on. He has already built you to be strong down here. Amen. One thing about it is I think where the, where the, where the issue goes on sometimes with, with men is we have this armor, right? God sent us down here and we have this armor on, but a, a, a lot of times, we don't, some of us know how to use it and some of us don't. Some of us know, if you, if you ever watched the, the Avengers or one of those type of movies, because I, I love those movies. If you ever watch those movies, you, you can see that when, when they first start off, some of them don't know what they got. They don't know what's inside of them. They don't know what they're carrying. So what happens is they, they find out by error, right? A missile might go off or different things might happen. And then they're finding out who they are as they're messing around with these different buttons and different things that they have on. Them. Mm. Mm. But the men that know who the, the men that know who they are, they're able to operate mm, 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 the way God has called them to operate. Mm. If you go, if you, you, yes, Lord, I hear you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You can't not get caught with your armor off in this world. Everything that's going on, you can't get caught with your armor off. That's why I love Superman and I love the Black Panther, right? Because one thing about their outfit, a lot of the rest of their outfits of the Avengers and different, different people, they got to put it on, right? But one thing we know about Superman, all he had to do was pull the jacket off and his, it was inside of him. And so what you have to know is the, everything is inside of you. The weapons are inside of you. Everything that you need is inside of you. You then do 
for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. We got to speak from our heart. Sometimes we are hurting. Sometimes we are lost. Sometimes we don't understand what's going on, but we must go to God in prayer. I think about the old song that said, take it to the Lord in prayer. Right. If we don't learn to take things to the Lord in prayer, we're not uniting ourselves with him. Mm -hmm. God really loves us and wants us to see how he do things because as we follow him, he is cleansing us. Yes, he is. I used to wonder why did people try to teach faith without repentance? It don't make sense because you can't allow the person to change. But I hear a lot of times people telling you, you got to have faith, but then they don't allow you to make your repentance, which is to focus your mind on God so that you can actually get to a place where you worship him and you bow down before him and you let him go before you. God loves you so much that he don't leave you comfortless. He said that I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter, one that will come and stand by you, one that will actually be there so that you know which way you're supposed to go. I think about the Old Testament said that he led the children of Israel with a pillar of fire by night, but in the daytime, he led them by a cloud. In the daytime, God really loves us and cares for us that he made sure that we are guided, amen? And when we get to the place where we are caught up with him, in John 8, he will actually have your back. He'll have your back to the place where when everybody else want to go against you and want to kill you. Uh -huh. This is what Jesus said. Whoever have not sinned, cast the first stone. Uh -huh. But we as his children must get to a place of not saying if we're sinned or not, but who do we love? Thank you, Jesus. Who do we care about the most? What is it that we need in our lives more than anything? Thank and you, that Lord. is God himself. Thank you, For the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to dividing soul, spirit, bones, joints, marrow, which Thank mean you, that he can come and help you out of any, any situation you're dealing with because you are his. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When we learn that we are God's chosen people, uh huh. Psalms chapter three, mm -hmm. verses one through four, mm -hmm. helps us the most with Thank seeing you. that. Yes, Lord. We can trust Him no matter what's uh -huh. going on. Remember that the word always speaks to us. Remember that we, we are carriers of the word. We are carriers of glory. The glory does not belong to us. It belongs to him. When we start to give glory to people, that's when we start to lose the mindset of what God really wants to do. And something I want to get into the word right now. I know I'm speaking fast because it's 15 minutes, but I have a lot to say. And let's go right to the word. I want to go to Romans chapter 13. And it says like this. We read this under the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the church says the victory says amen. Now it says, let everyone be subject to the government authorities for there's no authority except that which god has established the authorities that exist has been established by god consequently whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against that god has instituted and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves for rulers hold no terror for those who do right but for those who do wrong do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority then do what is right you will be commended for the one in authority is god's servant for your good but if you do wrong be afraid for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. What, what does it say? That for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's service, agents of wrath, to bring punishment of the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. Let me tell you something. The conscience is not your mind. The conscience is your heart. Why do I say that your conscience? Spiritually, your conscience is your heart. Why? Because everything that you feel, you feel the heart. Everything that you think of, before you think of it, you already feel it. Why? Because it is something that God wants. That's why it says in the Bible that God always was after David's heart. Why? Because it was a heart of humbleness. It was a heart of a surrenderance. It was a heart of humility. When we start to have that heart, we start to learn what authority is. Authority is part of our identity in Christ. We have to understand that without authority, we can't cast out demons. Without authority, we can't deliver somebody. We got to understand that the one that delivers somebody is Jesus. But when you don't, when you don't have a power 
in Jesus. When you don't think that the name of Jesus has power, you lose your identity. Why? Because the first ministry is supposed to be your house. If your house is not in order, you cannot govern the church. If your house is out of order, you cannot govern the ministry. Why? You're supposed to start in reach first. You know what's the problem about the, the churches nowadays? That everybody wants to do outreach, but they don't want to do in reach. Everybody want to preach about the people from the nations, but God gave you the people to preach. God gave you the, the, the sheep to shepherd. But the thing is that not only people are sheep, this is the thing, this is the confusion. Remember that sheep only listen to the shepherd and sheep don't even respond to anything. When you accept Jesus Christ, you gain as a child of God. A child of God has inheritance. Sheep does not have inheritance. So when you start to be a child of God, you know that you have a kingdom, you have kingdom inheritance. And what does that mean? That when you are a child of God, you have authority. When you start to preach and prophesy to the things that are dead, when you start to speak life to dry bones, when you start to speak the fire, that's why I love what, 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 what the apostle was preaching about because when, when you don't have prayer, you have no time to breathe. Everybody in the Bible always had a prayer life and every time when they prayed, something happened. The thing, you know what the problem is? That we sometimes pray for the things that we don't need. Let's, try, let's pray about things that we need and not things that we want. Let's pray about because you know what it is? that when we're Now, this ED number six, this one is personal for me. It's the emasculated daddy. This is an all-out global assault on fathers, fatherhood, and anything that resembles the relationship between our Abba and us. The reflection that should be with us and our own children. That breakdown of the family and notably the emasculated daddy is a very visible cancer in the society, but also in the church. Now, there's some scriptures, Psalm 103.13 and Proverbs 13.24 and 19.18. But the thing about being the emasculated daddy is that the enemy wants this misrepresentation of fatherhood to be the narrative when we know it's a lie. We know that a powerless father has is a destructive situation. But we're going to deal with that today, too. ED number seven is energy depleted. After slaying dragons, working, playing, praying, fighting traffic and other weights, of life, both sacred and secular, we're tired. We're exhausted. And that leaves us and everything vulnerable to attack. But Isaiah 40, 31 says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. The solution for us being depleted of our energy is to simply get recharged and refreshed in the Lord. It's a hard thing with all the things we got going on, but that is the, that is God's plan. It's his solution. It's his way he's helped his men throughout the centuries. Next ED is something a little bit different. This is our turning point tonight, brothers. It's the executive decision. Ultimately, we have to remember that whenever anyone's reached our Lord Jesus with their affliction, he always asked them, what is it that they wanted? We too are faced with an executive decision to either continue to suffer and negatively affect ourselves, our families, and our communities? Will you, kingdom men, give the Lord Jesus your weaknesses for his strength? What executive decisions are you willing to make to lay down the things that afflict us, that attack us, and that hurt us for the things that Jesus wants to give us, the things that he wants to equip us with? The other side of that is basically why we're all on this men's conference tonight. It's effective discipleship. We are to hold each other accountable for our growth, maturity as Christian men, husbands, fathers, brothers, business leaders, to be trustworthy, invisible, present pillars in our communities. It's one thing to be an amazing man of God inside the four walls of the church, but in your community, in your town. They don't know that power that's in you because you only operate in the four walls. The effective discipleship is for all of us to hold each other accountable, regardless of our individual congregations or social circles, but to lift each all up, other up. For the lion's den. A lot of men are going through on their jobs. A lot of men are going through with their families. A lot of men are dealing with different situations. But look at Daniel. Daniel was in a den and he was calling on the name of Jesus. But God said, just wait, lion. Wait, Daniel. 
there is a spiritual battle that's going on in heaven. Uh, but if you just hold on uh, and keep on calling out Jesus, uh, there's something about the name of Jesus. Uh, there's deliverance in the name of Jesus. Uh, there's breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Uh, and I decree, declare on the man today. Uh, I decree and I declare any day now, breakthrough, overturn, and the floodgates and the windows of heaven is opening up. But you just got to hold on and keep on crying out, Alba Father, which art in heaven, uh, hallowed be thy name, uh, thy kingdom come, uh, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, we got to keep on calling on that great name. And it's a great name for a reason. But he says, and, the, and Jesus says, and he used a parable. He says, to not to faint, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge me. Hold on, men of God. Don't give up. And now I'm talking to the men of God. I'm sorry, but sometimes we got to take some stuff by ourselves because we deal with things in the natural and we deal with things in the spiritual realm. And I'm encouraging the men of God on today. Hold on to your prayer life. Why? Because there's a story of a woman. And she went to the judge. Uh huh. She went to the judge and she asked the judge, would you avenge me? of my adversary. And there's been many times that we've been crying out and saying, God, we've been crying out, God, God. But he used the example of the widow lady, the parable, who kept on coming to the unjust judge that did not care nothing for the people, did not care nothing for God. But the woman said, I need you to avenge me from my adversary. Men of God, we got to keep on going to God because he says in his word, and shall not God avenge his own elect, the man of God? He said, I will avenge my own elect which cry day and night unto him. Though he be long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. God said today, <laughs> just like there was a breakthrough for the widow lady, uh, today is a breakthrough for you. Uh, today is a breakthrough for you on your job. Uh, today is a breakthrough for you and your family. Today is a breakthrough for you and your health. Uh, today is a breakthrough for you and your mind. Uh, that's even some people on the panel right now that do you, I can see you right now and I'm not calling out no names. Uh, that's some people on the panels right now that you're going through, but I see the smile on your face, but I see the tears uh, that's coming on. I see the hurt. I see the pain. I see what you're going through. Uh, but God told me to tell you today uh, that not to faint, uh, but to always to pray, uh, always to pray through the good, uh, always through to pray through the tears, uh, always pray through the pain. Uh, sometimes you can't get two sentences out, uh, but sometimes you just got to lay there and say, Jesus, uh, the, the children and Jacob is pronouncing the blessing. Issachar is a man who understands the time and they know what Israel should do. Why does he know what to do? How does he know what to do? Where does his wisdom and his understanding come from? We're going to find it right here in verse 49 in these next couple of chapters. It says, Issachar is a strong ass. That's the Bible. I didn't make it up. Issachar is a strong ass. Let's go ahead and make it PG. Issachar is a strong donkey. I wish that we had a time when we were talking about men that when you stand up over top of my casket, I want you to be able to say Justin Valentine was a strong man. Pastor Dury was a strong man. Pastor Shannon was a strong man. I want to get back to the time where we talk about this was a strong man. He didn't bend. He didn't break. He didn't compromise. He wasn't perfect, but he was a strong ass. He was somebody that could carry a burden. He can lift up a burden. He could hold things together. He was strong. He was a man among men. That's what they said about Jesus. He was a man among men. I want to be around men that like to be man among men. Come on, somebody. If you believe it tonight, drop some sevens or some fire in the chat. Issachar is a strong donkey lying down in between two burdens, Pastor Dory. When he sees how good his resting place is and how pleasant his land is, he will bend his shoulder to the burden and submit to forced labor. I want to hear, I want y'all to hear me something because when I first read this, I didn't understand what in the world 
um, Issachar did to have to succumb to being forced into labor in a good land. It sounds to me, this is contrary because God has not called me to walk or live in slavery, but he has called me to work and he has called me to uh, carry a burden. Issachar is a strong donkey of a man who can crouch in between two burdens. Can you hear me, brothers? You will always stand in between two burdens as a strong man. Amen. There's got to be weights on one side and weights on the other side, and then we do the press. Are y'all with me? If you're going to get strong, you're going to have to get two burdens. You're going to have to be able to do ministry in one hand, family in the other hand. You're going to have to be able to do friends in one hand, ministry in the other hand. You're going to have to do work in one hand, and then ministry in the other hand. You are going to have to always be able to crouch in between two burdens and begin to push. But he says, I found a land that was a land where I can rest. The first thing I got to tell you is, brothers, in my five minutes that I got left, is you got to get, first of all, brothers, the first thing I got to tell you is you got to settle down. I know you are a strong ass, amen, but there is some, there is a difference between a strong ass and a wild ass. Come on, but you, you got to calm down. That's the first thing I got to tell you is you got to calm down. It's one thing to be strong, but one of the fruit of the spirit is self-control and self-discipline. And if you want to be a man that's in control, first thing you got to learn how to control is yourself. Amen. If you're going to get between two burdens, you're going to have to learn how to exhibit some discipline and some self-control. There's a lot of people in the body of Christ, there's a lot, a lot of men that are not committed to moving forward. So that's why, guess what? That's why you see you're not committed to your family. You're not committed to your loved ones. You're not committed to your job because guess what? You still haven't made the commitment yet. You have still not made the commitment and you see why you're living in lack. You see why you, you, have, you lack power because guess what? You're fully not committed to what you're called to do. And guess what? We have, so we have men in ministry. We have men in all types of in to, on all type of aspects of life. They are not committed, but you can't be, be half hearted in this game. You can't be half hearted in this game. I'm gonna say something. Some men are not ready to commit, and because you're not ready to commit, you're going to going into battle unprepared and half hearted. You are going into your you are going to what God is calling you to do half hearted and unprepared. As being armed and dangerous, you have to be prepared and ready to go. Because guess what? If you are not prepared, if you are not ready to go, if you're not, if your whole heart is not in this thing, I guarantee you, you are going to get shot. And guess what? Because you're going to get shot and because you're going to get hurt, guess what? Other people are going to follow behind your half part of this. And guess what? Guess what? Because here's the thing. When you're committed to something, it's not only just you. It's the people that you're meant to minister minister to, and because you're going in half hearted, you're not you're not just destroying your ministry. You're not destroying your goals. There's other there are other people, dreams and goals that are attached to your commitment. That are attached to your vision. I hope you're catching hold of this this evening, because guess what? If you're not coming in prepared, if you're not coming in wholehearted to do this thing, you're going to fall off, and it is not going to work. When you make that decision, God starts to prepare you. God starts to give you the tools and the gifts to, that he's came from you from the beginning. He starts to pull those things out of you, but he only pulls them out of you when you make the decision and the commitment to go forward. I'm going to piggyback on what, Don, uh, what uh, Prophet Donald was talking about in Jeremiah. In Jeremiah, God was telling him that he had the gifts. God tell him that he had the talent, that he had the potential. But guess what? But, but what do some men do? What do some of us do? We want to use the excuse that, oh, I'm not smart enough. I may be young. I might not be talented. I might not have the, I'm, I'm, I can't, I can't preach like Ju Pastor Justin. I can't preach like Pastor Dury. I can't prophesy like Pastor Donald. Guess what? If he wanted you to do that, he would have called you to do that in the first place. He's not calling me to, he's not calling you to be like Pastor Justin. He's not calling you to be like P Pastor Dory. He's not calling you to, 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 uh, to play the keys like Donald Trump. He's calling you to be you. Planet to keep what God created. And in this season, God needs a man and men that will understand 
the assignment and who were able to run the play. I just need somebody to say run the play because I believe that's what's going to happen in this next season. Come on, this arm and dangerous conference ain't happening for nothing. The, this, this, these message, this message that's coming from the speakers ain't going out in vain. I believe that this, this in this season, God is raising up men that is that are going to understand the assignment and that will say to themselves, "I'm going to run the play." As a matter of fact, I believe that there are some men now that's saying put me in the game coach come on because I got something to say put me in the game coach because I believe that there's power in my voice put me in the game coach because I believe that there's power in my hands to shift things come on put me in the game God is putting some men in the game that are going to transform this nation that are going to turn and shift the momentum of this season and I believe it with all my heart so here's what I want to say as I get ready to wrap this thing up I believe that God is looking for conquerors and not conformers. Let me say it again. God is looking for conquerors and not conformers because conquerors are transformers. Come on now, somebody. And so God, God's looking for a mighty man of valor that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge and stop hell from taking our generation. Joshua 1 verse 9 says, have I not commanded you? Listen to me. It ain't an option for you to get in this game. Come on. God's given us a command. He's called us. He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Listen, I don't care how it may look. Don't be frightened. He says, because you, you, you have to understand this. You don't have to be frightened. And you don't have to be dismayed. For I am with you wherever you go. Listen, we got the greatest coach in the history of the world. And his name is Jesus. And he's saying, I'm looking for a man that's going to make an interception. And I just need to tell you, brothers, that you are capable. God just needs you committed. You're powerful. God just needs you to be in a posture of prayer. You're a warrior, but God is looking for you to be a worshiper. Come on. See, we need men to make an interception. Watch this, y'all, through intercession. I want to say it again. We need men to make an interception through intercession, whose posture is going to be one that says, God, we trust you. Whose posture is going to be one that says, God, we depend on you. Whose posture is going to be one that says, God, we know that no matter what's happening around us, you are mighty to save because God, we trust you. If it's anybody that should be praying for our families and our communities and our nation, it should be men that know that God's mighty to save. We need to protect our children's purpose with our lives. We need to be able to stand in the gap for our wives when they are weary and can't stand for themselves. We need a momentum shift. And in order for the momentum to shift, we need mighty men that says, I believe that God has called me and crafted me and created me and planted me on this planet for such a time as this. But look at somebody as a neighbor, don't let your struggle affect your praise. Uh, because God can give you an answer right away, but you still got to keep your praise alive. Uh, brothers and sisters, we do go through trials and tribulations that the enemy wants our mouth to be shut. But do you not understand that power is in your mouth? If God, if the devil can shut your mouth, then he can take everything else away from you. But you have to understand that it does not matter what kind of situation I'm in. When God deserves the praise, I have to clap my hands. And I got to stop my feet because God is getting ready to bring us out. Look at about three people and say, neighbor, he's taking me out right now. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.